the main point of, get, uh, of uh, bringing everyone together is uh, um, that we should have an awareness about uh, the focal point of our Avodah Hashem, which really should be Harabayas, whether you uh, hold from the, uh, like the opinions that it's not proper to go up to Harabayas, or you hold that it is proper. Everyone should have a feeling of, of as the Pasuk says, Niksafa Begam Kalsa Nafshi the Chatzos Hashem, she had a feeling of, of, of longing, of yearning for the Harabais. Um, so we heard a few months ago uh, from Harav Sovetsky from Mary Kazarab, who gave a very interesting shear uh, on the topic, um, and uh, also had a, a presentation and, and showed why he thought that uh, halakhically and why his rabbeim felt halakhically was not proper uh, to go up to Harabais. And we wanted to, people that from the shul who who do uh, uh, go to Harabais wanted to hear another a view on the subject. Um, so uh, Pinchas Abramovich was uh, kind enough to come and join us. Um, uh, Pinchas uh, is a uh, uh, Avreich in the, Kol the Zilberman Kolel in the Old City. He learned in Brisk. Um, uh, how many years he learned in Brisk? Four years. Um, and uh, has been going up to Harabais and leading tours up to Harabais put up at this nice uh, 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 safer katan for 10 shekel you can pick up on all kinds of nice things about this. I'm going to show our bodies. So without further ado, I'll take us. Take it away. Just push myself in here. You should seek the Shechina and come there. Chazal tells us that one of the things of seeking the Shechina, how we kind the Tidrishu, the looking, searching for the Shechina, is actually the search of where is the Mokom HaShechina, where is the location of the Mokom HaShechina on the Harabayas. Chazal tells us there's a Sefri on this post, Yochel Tantin Achi Yevel Novi. You shouldn't build the base Amigdash until the Novi tells you where is the Mokom to build the base Amigdash. You shall seek and find, and then the Novi will tell you. The Malbim says on the Sefri, explains it, that Gilo Bukansh, that Kodesh Baruch will not be Megala Soidoy of where the Mokom Amidosh is until we from ourselves try to find a place, we do it on our own, and when we search for the Mokom Ashkino, then Hashem will send the Ruach Melomalo to help us finding the Mokum Ashkina and the Mokum Amigdash. So what we're doing tonight in trying to find the precise location of the Beis Amigdash is actually a mitzvah of the Sheikh Rai Tidrishu of So let's be with this mitzvah. We start with uh, talking about the different, the various sections on our bias, each with its own level of Kedusha. Sometimes we look at our bias as one big thing, one Kedusha, our bias, and it has halachas of Shiloh Tmei, and we'll get to it soon. But actually, the Mishnah Masech Eskela mentions eight different levels, eight, eight different areas, each with its own level of Kedusha within the our bias itself. In other words, there's divisions of Kedusha within the our bias itself. And let's first talk about some of those levels, and then we'll try to place where those areas are exactly on our bias today. So of course the basic Chalukah, the basic division is of the three Machnois. Starts in the Midbar, Machni Yisrael, of the 12 Shvatim around the Mishkan. Chai saw when they camped in the Mishkan was in the Surah of Three Rings. Machni Yisrael on the outside <coughs> ring. 
In the middle was Machani Levia, the Levia and Moshe Rabbeinu and his family, and at the very center was Machani Shechino, the Mishkon, and the Chatzar Mishkon. When Kalisha went into Eretz Yisrael, so although they no, they no longer reside in the Surah of Three Rings, but the concept of the Machanois travel over them to the city of Yerushalayim, where the city of Yerushalayim becomes Machane Yisrael, Harabayis, it's just for illustration purposes, it's not exact, uh, what's on here is not exactly the rulers of Yerushalayim, Harabayis, but so Yerushalayim becomes Machane Yisrael, Harabayis gets the aloha of Machane Levio, and the Azorah, Within it, the building of the Beis Hamikdash itself and the Mizbeach, that is the Machane Shechino. Each one has its own halacha. Machane Yisrael and Mitzurah is the most severe tuna for our for these purposes, and therefore Mitzurah is not allowed in the entire Machane Yisrael, and is not allowed into the city of Yerushalayim. Harabayis is also for what's called Tumay Sayyotzis Migufoy. The Pasuk calls it says Zav. Zav is a sickness. Um, the Rishonim say Achodi Kove from the Klei Azera to Old Janaria. It's um, very uncommon amongst our societies. Perhaps in more immoral societies, it's more common, like in Africa. But because it's very uncommon, and therefore already in the Sugis and Shayas and the Mara say that we don't really have to be precious to Ziva unless like someone knows that he's sick. But Chazal tell us that in Zab is also included other tumis which are called tumis and Yotzeis Mibufa, which means that it's not coming because he touched something, like he touched the shares or touched the maze, but rather the tumor generates from within. That includes Zav, a Zava, a Nida, a Yoledes, and the Gemara says also Valkyrie, all these tumors are called tumors are Yotzeis Minaguf, and they're also to go into the Harabayas. I'm not going to go through all the definitions of all the tumor and all the halachas of Tara. I'm the, focus more on the location, but if anyone's planning to go to the Harabai, they should talk to Rav to make sure they know everything about the Hilfus Tara. So, Tumay Sayyotis Min Aguf are not allowed into the entire Harabai. A Tmei Mace, someone who went to the Big Ben, he's it's just coming because he's a Tmei Mace, he's allowed on the Harabai, he's just not allowed into the Azara, which is Machan Ishkino. The Azara is the section the very center of the Beis Hamikdash, within it, the building of the Beis Hamikdash, the Mezbeach, and its chotze, that's called the Azara. It may be is, is allowed on Arabayas, but not into the Azara. Just the different areas on the Arabayas itself, the Mishnah tells us that Arabayas was Chamesh Meir Zama, Chamesh Meir Zama, 500 a square of 500 amas by 500 amas. The Arabayas that we see today is a lot larger than that, almost double. And we'll talk about it more soon, why is it so much bigger? It's basically because around 100 years before, towards the end of Bayashini, Harry the Great, Hordus Amela, extended, when he renovated the Mesa Mikdash, also extended the mountain by making arches and landfill. Either way, then therefore Harabayas today is much bigger than 500 amas. But the original Harabayas, with the Kedusha, is a 500 amas square. Within it is the Azara. That's the main that's with the in the Azara is the building of the Bisamitash itself and the Mizdeah. To its east is the Ezra Snoshin, 135 Amas by 135 Amas. And surrounding these two Azaras, the Azara and the Ezra Snoshin, is what's called the Khail. The Khail is sort of a buffer zone of ten Amas that people shouldn't come very close to the wall of the Azara itself, and therefore there was like a strip of ten Amis around these two Azaras, surrounded by a little wall called the Surig, like a gate around it, and that's basically um, the, the different levels in the different areas in the Harabais itself. There are further divisions which the Mishnah makes, but it's not relevant for our purposes, and so we're not going to get into it. So again, we have the Harabais, Within the Azara, as it's notion, surrounded by the Khail. This is the way it is on the Nile, the Israel Museum. Here you see the Azara, so the Bisamikdash at the center, and you can't really see the Mizbea. This is the Ezra Snoshin, with the steps going down from, from the Azara to the Ezra Snoshin. And then surrounded by a Khail and a small wall called the Suri. The first halacha we've already mentioned, which is halacha do'iraisa, Harabayis is 
Kalei Mekudosh more than the rest of Yerushalayim, that Zavon and Zavois, Nidois, Vyodois, Echafein, Echnasim Nesham, any Tuma and Yerites Ben Aguf is not allowed onto Harabites. Midir Abonon, sorry, Etmei Meis, as we said, is allowed on the Harabites, but he's not allowed into the Azor. The Abonon added on that not only is Etmei Meis not allowed into the Azor, but he's also not allowed anywhere past the Chil, which we showed that uh, buffers on surrounding the Azor and the Azor's notion was the Chil, so Etmei Meis is allowed on the Harabites, but not anywhere past the Chil. So we assume everyone nowadays is Etmei Meis. Yeah. Um, Just to mention an interesting thing, um, the Chil is not only Mekudosh that Tmei Meisim are not allowed to go past there, also Goyim are not allowed anywhere past the Chil. Yosef of Matasio, who we should introduce, Josephus Flavius, he was a Koyim from Mishpachas Yoyorev, he served in the Beis Amikdash. He was one of the generals at the Great Revolt, which led to the Forum. Eventually, he crossed the lines and he ended his life in Rome. He wrote history books, which we have. In those books, he describes in very great detail the Beis Amigdash, the Yerushalayim, and a lot of the information we know about the Beis Amigdash comes from what he writes, from his books. He says that in the Chail, which was surrounding, I'm sorry, in the Surrey that was surrounding the Chail, at various points there were stones with a Greek inscription in them warning Goyim not to go past this, this gate because if yes, they would be killed because they're, because they're not allowed past that point. Around 150 years ago, near the Harabais, they found a stone with a Greek inscription, which says just that, that uh, no Gentile, this is of course a translation, no Gentile man behind this wall, subsequent uh, death. And this stone itself is now in Istanbul because it was found in the Ottoman period and that's why it was taken to Turkey. But there's a fragment of a similar stone, just a stone like this, but we found just a fragment, like the middle part, and it's now in the Israel Museum. That's Garabana. Uh, right. Garabana roots. There's no Israel Museum. There is no Israel Museum. There is no Israel Museum. Did they get Nisa's face then, or it's like Nisa with Israel? The different people can talk about why was it death? Yeah, well, I was a guy, yeah, we never do the guy in the Some say it means peace of nation mind. I said, just to sum up what we've said, Zav, Zav, Anidi, Yoledes, and Valkyrie, which are two of say, Yetis, and Abdul, are not allowed anywhere on the Harabais. Tme Mis, Midorais, is not allowed into the Azara. And Midorabanon is not allowed past the Chil. The rest of Harabais outside of the Chil is Mutter for Tme Mis to go. Now we get to the question. The Azara is around 6% of what the Harabayas is today. It's a very small portion of, of percentage-wise of the Harabayas that we see. But if, I, if we cannot locate where the Azara is on the Harabayas, then one would not be allowed to go on Harabayas even two steps. He wouldn't be allowed to walk in anywhere. Perhaps if he's, he's really where he's going in, he's walking into the Azara. So if someone has no idea where the Azara is, he can't go anywhere on Harabayas because maybe he's walking into the Azara. In order for it to be mutter to go into Harabayas, we would have to pinpoint and locate where the Azara located within the Harabayas. Even if one cannot pinpoint exactly where the Azara is on Harabayas, if you, we could take a certain area, let's say over here on the south, we could have an area where we can rule out that the Azara is definitely not there, so even if I don't know exactly where the Azara is, I can then walk in that area since I ruled out that it's definitely not where the Azara is. So what we're going to try to do tonight, we're going to try to, we are going to try to locate and pinpoint where the Azara is on our bikes, and we're going to do that by four avenues. We're going to, four different ways that we're going to get to the conclusion or try to the Mavara, we are the Azara on the Harabayas. The first way is going to be the Mesoira. Is there a certain place on Harabayas that people knew it was passed down generation to generation from the Orban to us? Just like we know we are at Israel, and we don't think that maybe it's one of the islands of Greece, or we know where Yerushalayim is, we know where Harabayas is, perhaps we also know where the Beis stood on the Harabayas. That's one. 
So second thing we're going to do, we're going to take the Korot that we have from Chazal. We have Mishnah Yismidah, which tells us a lot of different things about the Bishamikdash, including different Lashoklis. Bishamikdash was built at different levels, we'll see. We're going to take the information we have from Mishnah Yismidah and try to compare it to the mountain as we know it today and see where does it fit on the mountain, where does it not fit. Try to figure it out from here. The third thing, we're going to bring Mekoros, sources that tell us that the Beit HaMikdash was at the Pisgah, the summit of Har Moriah. So again, we're going to try to locate where is the summit of Har Moriah, and that again should indicate to us where is the Mokum HaMikdash on Har Bayis. And finally, we'll get to Mimsa Imra which is sort of landmarks that we can say on Har Bayis, okay, I see this wall or this bird or something that I could connect to the buildings, to the Azores of the Beit HaMikdash. And then that again will indicate to me where the Makkum HaMikdash is based on the things that we find, that we have, know from Chazal where they are in relevance to HaMikdash. Do you give any credence to our Yeah, that's it. Right. But When we say that we're looking for the, sorry, when we say that we're looking for the Mokum HaAzara on Harabayas, we can try to locate that by one of two ways. We can either try to locate the Azara in full, if someone tells us where the Mokum HaAzara was on Harabayas. Another way is by locating the Eben HaShashiyah. Eben HaShashiyah is not Noshon Shtiya, it's not drinking, it's really Eben HaShitaya which is a even of a tashtit, it's a foundation stone, which is the foundation stone of the Oren. The Oren with the Luchas in it stood on the even hashtaya, on the even of tashtit. Chazal tells us that mimenu ushtat olam, it's the foundation stone of the entire creation. In the Kodesh HaKadoshim, where the even hashtaya was in the Kodesh HaKadoshim, it was an outcropping of rock that was in the Kodesh HaKadoshim. Based on the knowledge we have from Seches Midos, we know where the Eben Ashtia is. If we, if we can find out where the Eben Ashtia is, we can then know that that area is the Kodesh HaKadoshim, to its east is the Heichal, the Ulam, and we can draw the Azores around that stone, around that place, around that point, based on the knowledge we have from Seches Midos. So if someone tells us where the Eben Ashtia is, that will also be sufficient for us to find out where the Azara was on that island. Measure. Because they were exact measures that we know from the So let's first just take a look at our bias. And this is looking at our bias from the northeastern corner. This is the eastern wall, Shari Rachman right over here. So this is the east wall, the southern wall of our bias, and this is the western wall of our bias. The western wall of our bias is more commonly known as the Muslim Arabia, of course. But actually, the plaza where people dive in is just one eighth of the wall over here. Now, the wall is a very long wall, 488 meters, almost a half a kilometer long, which goes across the whole Harabayas. So again, the three walls, west, south, and east, are the original walls still there from the time of the Beis Hamikdash. The upper rows were renovated by later generations. But the lower rows are still there from the time of the Beisam English itself. On the north, not so much is left, only a few remnants of the wall. Um, that's one thing. The second thing, the Harabayas, as we see it now, is around 300 meters from east to west and 500 meters from north to south. That's a lot larger than the 250 meters, uh, 250 meters square, what the Mishnah tells us, 500 amas by 500 amas. It's almost double that. And the reason for that is, as we've said, towards the end of Bayashani, less than 100 years before the end of Bayashani, Buddhists who renovated the Beis Hamidosh, as the Gemara tells us in Malgasa, and Yosef Matasio tells us, and we know, he also then extended Harabais. The 500 Amas square Harabais was too small for all the Yidin who were coming to Harabais at the time. And he did it by, sorry, He did it by putting, or by building walls around, like retaining walls, building arch, filling up the mountain with arches, 
This is the mountain Maria itself. This is Maria. You build walls around it, then fill up these areas by building arches and making the land. That way you made the platform of Harabayas much larger. Back. So that's the Harabayas we have now. Of course the Harabayas have a kudosh that's that uh, Kodesh and has um, Isurim of Nachan Yilavio, the Chorir is only the first 500 Amas that were the original Harabayas and the extension does not have Kedusha. Today, well, as far as I know, everyone who goes to Harabayas has marked around the whole entire platform as having the Kedusha of Harabayas and everyone goes to Mitra, even if he's only going to go to a place where it's assumed that it's only a later extension. What we see on our values today is the Tsarenu's two Muslim build, Islamic buildings. One is Al-Aqsa on the south, that's the most important part for the Muslims. And this is um, the mosque where they come every Friday, and that's over here on the south, the Al-Aqsa mosque. Besides for that, there's another building called known as the Kibbat Asela, the Dome of the Rak, which is not a mosque, it's a shrine. It's been, in Arabic, it's a makam, makom just guarding over an important place. Sometimes they make it over a kever or over something like that. It's a makam. Um, it's built on a platform. This platform is paved and this is the center of Arabayas and on it is the Kipata Sela, the shrine. We're going to talk about it a little more in a second. This is a picture of Harabayas from the 30s. Here's the eastern wall with Shah Rahman in it. This is the north, we're looking from the north towards the south. You can see at the south, the Al-Aqsa Mas. At the center is the platform with the Dome of the Rock on it. And all the rest of our bias is Amish beer. Today there's uh, olive trees and stuff, but this is just around. Okay, so now we're going to start to uh, try to locate the local amigdash within the Harabais. So the first thing we're going to start is the soil. The soil is what we said that a certain area, a certain place was given over from generation to generation. Everyone knew this was the Makom Amigdash on Harabais. Just to bring out the point. Sorry. There's a letter from the Shalom. Shalom was lived around five, 400 years ago. He was originally from Prague and came to Eretz Yisrael. He lived in Yerushalayim and eventually moved to Tzvayim and that's where he came from. A Rav who knew the Shalom from Prague still wrote him a letter and he said, I heard that you moved to Yerushalayim and I can't believe it. Don't you know that it's also to live in Yerushalayim? He said, what? It's also to live in Yerushalayim? He says, yeah. And Yerushalayim was the Mokum Amigdosh. And as you know, there's the Isaac Taurus where Tmei Meis to go into the Makom HaAzara. And since we don't know where the Azara is, Nimtza, call Yerushalayim, the Sofi Taurus. So the Shlom writes him back a letter and he says, Chas Vashom, to say such a thing, Pek Kodesh, you shouldn't say it, and he writes as follows. Da, ki mei oilam lo yoyo Sofik b'mkoyim b'yis amigdash. Just like there is no Sofik, that there was a b'yis amigdash, and that there will be a b'yis amigdash, there ain't Sofik b'mkoyim b'yis amigdash. Ki huze? Meaning, even though Yerushalayim changed hands many times and uh, everyone ruled in Yerushalayim, and um, we always do where the Makkah Amigdash was on, is on our place. So let's just talk about this place. Why does the Shalom refer to? As we said, the mask is over here. Al-Aqsa Mask on the south. And at the center of Harabayas, there's a platform with the Dome of the Rock on it. The Dome of the Rock is a building that was built in 691, which is over 1300 years ago, it's already finished. It was built in the beginning of the Muslim period. Just to say a little bit of not the history, but just the base Amigdash was destroyed by the Romans in the year 70. The Romans ruled and as Israel basically for almost 600 years. First as the Romans, or the later Roman period, 
And then after the empire took on Christianity, we call them the Byzantines. So until 324, uh, it's the Romans, and then the Byzantines, <coughs> basically the same people. And the Byzantines were very bad to the, to the Jews. And in the year 638, the Muslims conquered Eretz Yisrael, were led by Omer ibn Khattab, who was the Khalif after Muhammad. And they conquered Eretz Yisrael, and then the Muslims ruled in Eretz Yisrael for around 400 years until the Crusaders. So this building was built in the beginning of the Muslim period. He said it was finished already in 691, which is over 1300 years ago. As we said, this building is not a mosque, it's a shrine. A shrine means that it's guarding over some kind of Muslim brothers, as we said, usually a temple or something like that. So when we look at this beautiful shrine, it's a gorgeous building. It's a, it was, the building is standing basically the way it was built for over 1300 years. There were some renovations to the tile of this, but it's an amazing building. And it's guarding over a place. When we want to see what is it guarding over, what, what, what's, the, what's there, so it's basically built about around the beer bedra, around nothing. Which of course is very surprising. Why would someone build such a gorgeous building just around nothing? So when we look at sources, we see that this building was actually built around the Mokoma Migdosh. As we said, when Umar, Omar ibn Khattab conquered Eretz Yisrael from the Byzantines, the Byzantines were very bad to the Jews. Therefore, when the Muslims came to conquer Eretz Yisrael, there were many Jews which joined Omar ibn Khattab's army. And they helped him conquer Eretz Yisrael. When he came to Yerushalayim and a gesture to them, he built them. He said that the Mokam Amigdash, which up until then was just in ruins and it was a churva, he's going to build a nice building over there to the Mokam Amigdash. This story is mentioned in many sources. I'm just going to bring Samples. This is a Jewish chronicle from the Cairo Geniza, around 1100 years ago. It's written in Judeo-Arabic. This is a translation. Omer was asking the, the Eden about the Sela, about the Eretzia, and one of the Chachamim showed him where the Mokom Amigdosh was, and then he said to build on it the nice keeper, the Dome of the Rock. This is mentioned again in a letter from the Rabbanon of Yerushalayim in the time of the Goonim. They talk about the history of the, of the Yeshua Yehudi at the time of the Goyim in Yerushalayim, and they talk about when they conquered Israel from Edom, which of course is the Byzantines, there were people from the Israel with them, they showed them the Mokum Amikdash, and they built this building. Again, Reb Sachim Rebensburg, is from the Balei Atosvis, also mentions this story about the Zoki Nechol, which knew the Mokum Echol Ba'azara, and the uh, this is not only a Jewish legend, something that only the Jews know about, but actually historians of the time also know. Al Tabari is the greatest Muslim historian of the early Muslim period, and he writes his story at great length. He knows the names of the people who were there Abu Isfak and Kaab, and they show Omar, and he brings his story with the whole Ariyos. Also, Sibius was an Armenian bishop at the time in Yerushalayim. Also knows about this story about how the Eden came and they wanted to build a place on Migdor Shloim. This actually is alluded to in Midrashim. Very good, brother talks about the different things that Ne Yishmol are going to do in Eretz Yisrael. And one of the things they're going to do is Yigdru Prince is Chaymes Beis Amigdosh, Yigdru Binyan Behechol. And another message which is born in Eitzah Midrashim. Talks about Hamelah Hashemi Shiyamin Yishmol, which is referring to Uma, who was the second Khalif after Muhammad. Yehoi of Yisrael, the Yigdu Pertesim, or Pertes Ahechol, the Boyd of Yisham Ishtahavaya, Alem and Shazim. In the last thousand years, this mystery of that the Kippat Asela, the Dome of the Rock, was built over the Makum Amigdash, is mentioned by people living in Eretz Yisrael, by people who are just traveling by, by Yidin, by Goyim. It's Common knowledge, just like we know where Yerushalayim is, it's not much common knowledge. This is just one quote that we're going to talk about a little later. Rabbi Yaakov in Paris, who was a shliach of Rabbi Chilm in Paris. Rabbi Chilm in Paris was from the greatest Bali Atesis. Eventually came to Eretz Yisrael, called with the 300 Rabbonin. They opened the yeshiva in Akko. And Rabbi Yaakov in Paris was a shliach, and he writes, Sviv Evan Shtiyah, 
בונו מלכי ישמו על בניין מפוי המאוי, ואז הוא איזה בייס תפילה, או בונו למה מן הכאילו כיפה נועה המאוי, והבניין על בייס קודשי הקודשים ועל הלכת. אין ספק כי אבן הזה יצא שתחס הכיפה, היא אבן השתייה של ליל האוי האורי, בייס קודשי הקודשים. This is sometimes referred to as the Shita Saradvaz. The Tiratvaz is Shita, is that the Kippat HaSela, the Dome Adirak, the Dome Adirak, the Dome Adirak. In fact, it's a little, it's, a, it's not so correct, because it's not really the Tiratvaz is Shita. The Tiratvaz wasn't Mechadish anything. The Tiratvaz is simply taking the Messiah that was known for hundreds of years before him, and just applying that to where one may go on Harvayas. But the, the identification, of the Dome of the Rock, of the Kippat HaSela, as being the Mokom HaMikdash, is not really your advice, it predates the advice by hundreds of years, and it was known by everyone. But not that the advice is nothing, the advice is a very, very great uh, source, and Makur, which is used many, many times in Shulchan Aruch. So again, the advice uses this Messiah, and this Messiah is further quoted by many places, including the Bach, Shai Tshuva, Beke Yosef, Pasa Shulchan, and finally the Chavetz Chaim, when he talks about being Makrib Kavonis, with Banazer, different things, he also goes that the Mokom Amikdash is at the Dome of the Rock, at the Kippat HaSad. Therefore, from a Paisic's point of view, if he's asked where is the Mokom Amikdash, there isn't really much of a question. We know for hundreds of years, everyone knows where the Mokom Amikdash is. This Mesera can be traced back, as we saw, for at least 1,300 years to when they built the Dome of the Rock from the status. And in truth, it could be traced back even from the time of the Beis Amikdash. I'm not going to go through the whole thing right now because it's going to take too long. But there, are, there was, even though sometimes it's said that the Byzantine period there were no Jews in Jerusalem, it's not really so true. Already, past hundred years, all the Chachamim know that uh, there were even not only living in Jerusalem, but many, many people came to visit. Did we have the queries from Tanoim? Going into Arabayas, the Amiroim, the Dura of Abayah, the Rabbah, that go into Arabayas, the Yushami talks about where they left their shoes when they went into Arabayas. We have materials from Christians, from church fathers, which talk about the Eden coming on Tishabah and crying at the Mokom Amigdash. And uh, this Messiah was passed on from the time of the Chorban till the time when they built the Dome of the Rock. And from then, we you know the Dome of the Rock is the Mokom Amigdash. So the person that wrote the shla, the letter, like he didn't know. He right? didn't know. People who weren't over here, don't know. People who weren't in Israel don't know. Just like now, people who weren't in Israel know a lot more of these kind of things. Just one interesting thing. Now, there was the collapse of the dome in the, tenth, in the tenth century. Uh, some of the dome collapsed, right. but not the building itself. Not the, not the building itself. No, what collapsed was the Al-Aqsa. The reason is, well, I don't know. No, they said no. There's, if you look at history, they say in the 10th century, some of the, dome, the dome. Right. They saw the dome, but that's not the entire building. The building stood. But the Al-Aqsa Mosque allowed the, almost the whole building to collapse. It's built on extension. Where's the other rock? On the bedrock. Because the Al-Aqsa Mosque is standing on a landfill of arches, and therefore it's it's much more vulnerable to earthquake. Whereas the uh, dome of the rock is standing on the bedrock. One McCurd that is sometimes said as arguing with the Messiah of it is the Kafta of Ferah. So let's take a look at the Kafta of Ferah. The Kafta of Ferah was Rabbi Shtoya Parvi. It was the time of the Rosh. He came to Israel from France, from southern France. And he spent seven years going around to Israel, seeing all the different. Uh, he spoke to the people from all the Arabs. He writes a lot of Messiahs. He eventually put out a sefer called Kafta Afar, which is basically a sefer on Hukas Puris Baretz. And of course, in it, he also discusses Yerushalayim. What year was it? 1330. What's interesting is that the Kafta Afar, which talks about every place around Yerushalayim, where Shakur Pinus is, and where the Mokhab Sreif is, and every like, side thing, doesn't talk about where the Mokhab Amidlash is, which is surprising. The obvious explanation is because the Mokom Amigdash, just like he doesn't talk about where Yerushalayim is, that it's a city north of Beis 
things that were commonly known that everyone knows, he didn't write in the Sefer. What he wrote in the Sefer was all kinds of Kedushin that he had. We'll see later exactly what Sha'arachman really originally was, or where Sha'arachman is, all kinds of interesting things, and things that are Negei Allah Halacha. Whereas Mokum Amidosh is something that everyone knew, and therefore, he didn't feel a need to write it. So what is it that everyone knew in the time of the Kaftar of Ferah? Where was everyone showing the Mokum Amidosh? So all we have to do is look at people in the times of the Kaftar of Ferah. So starting back from Binyom and Tudela, around 100 years before him already, he already said that the Kipata Sela, the Dome of the Rock, is the place of the Bisa Amidosh. Pesach and Regensburg we read. Mechil in Paris was the Shlich of, I'm sorry, Yaakov in Paris, the Shlich of Mechil in Paris, we're going to get to in a minute. Now the Talmud Aramban, there was a Talmud Aramban who was in Yerushalayim at the same time as the Kaftar of Ferach, very proud that they even met. And he also mentions that on the Evans Theod there's a nice building, the Dome of the Rock. The Rav in Yerushalayim at the time of the Kaftar of Ferach was the Yitzhak Chilum, and he also writes about the Dome of the Rock being the Mokum Amidosh. So if the Kaftar of Ferach would have some kind of other sheet that would want to place the Mokum Amidosh would think that perhaps the Mokum Amidosh really is located somewhere else, of course he would discuss it in the Sefer and say, people say that it's at the Dome of the Rock, I think it's somewhere else, what am I right? He doesn't mention anything, so it's obvious because he holds, just like everyone else knows, that the Dome of the Rock was the Mokum Amidosh. Not only is there a silence that he doesn't mention it, when he talks, he says of a story that he heard there, Yechilmi Paris, which came to Eretz Yisrael, the real purpose why he came to Eretz Yisrael was because he wanted to be Makar of Karbonis. As you know, he be Makar of Karbonis, he went out of Beis Amikdosh, and he came to Yerushalayim and he wanted to be Makar of Karbonis with Zman Hazem. The Kafta Rafael then says that he had two objections with this that he didn't understand. He said, first of all, what about Tumor? What to him, how do we be Makar of Karbonis? And then he reminded himself that in Lachosh al because Tumor Hutra Another problem he had was, what about Koyen Miyuchos? We're not going to get into it. Point being, what a problem that he didn't have, he didn't say, oh, the Mokum Amigdash is a whole tumble, a whole mix up where the Mokum Amigdash is. Because Mokum Amigdash wasn't a sugya. Everyone knew where Mokum Amigdash was, that it was at the Dome of the Rock. Although the Kaftar of Ferah does not talk about the Mokum Amigdash per se, he talks about different um, areas or places surrounding the Mokum Amigdash, that from there we could derive where he held the Mokum Amigdash was, and as we'll see, it was exactly at the Dome of the Rock. The Kaftar of Ferah talks about the Mokum Sreifas Parah Aduma, and he says, Oida Yoyim Kubala Mokum Ahu, Vut Sfoyni Lekeva Chulda, north of Keva Chulda, Kimitachavei Keshes, that means the distance of an arrow throw, Shafoli Menumach, a little bit lower down the mountain. So we go to Har Hazisim. Sorry. Oh. Why does this help us? The reason is because Parshas Shabuah, Staka Parah Aduma, was done on Har Hazisim outside the Beis Hamikdash. The Kohen stood at Har Hazisim, faced the Beis Hamikdash, and looked straight into the Heichal, through the door of the Azmoshim, as it's saw into the Heichal, and he was mazed down seven times. So wherever the Mokum Shreifas Parah Aduma is, we make a straight line to the east, we get to the Mokum Amikdash. And so we're going to try, we're going to find where the Mokum Shreifas Parah Aduma was on Har Hazim, make a line across to Har Bayes, and we're going to land, we'll see where we land. But here this star, this red, this Google Maps, this Keva Kul Danabiyo. This is Keva Khuldo. So if he says to the north of Keva Khuldo, Shafal Menamat, it's around over here. So the Mokum Shrifas Parah Aduma is to the north of Keva Khuldo, around over here. If we make the line, we get straight to the Dome of the Rock. If we were to place the Mokum Amigdash, as someone said, if after a fellow holds that's over here, somewhere on the south of Arabayas, then the Mokum Shrifas Parah Aduma would be not to the north of Keva Khuldo, but rather to the south of Keva Khuldo. The fact that he says that the Mokum Shreifas Paradum is to the north of Keva Chulda, we again see that the Kaftar of Ferah accepted the well-known Messiahs that the Mokum Amigdash was at the Dome of the Rock. As we mentioned, the Talmud Ramban, who was in Eretz Yisrael at the same time as the Kaftar of Ferah, he actually mentioned both of these Messiahs. He talks about the Eben Shtiyah, 
that the Malchus Yishma built a nice keep on it. And he also mentions that Mokim Shreve of Paradumo, that the Itzteva and Hazis, and Mokim Asher Hoyashertim Shal Paradumo by Itzteva, he in the Kuvenes Neged Pesach Ha'echol. Which as we said, Pesach Ha'echol is where? By the Dome of the Rak, as he himself said, that that's where the Echol was. And the Mokim Shreve of Paradumo is directly across. Stop. Another thing the Kaftar of Pharaoh says that we can derive from there where he holds the Mokim Amigdash is, he talks about Shari Rachel. Shai Rachman is on the east of Haravayis. He talks about Shnei Sha'an, Gvoyim, Ma'oid, Bechakipois, Mechachot, Vidal Sisei, and Bazel, and Spoon, and Oilam, the Kernel, and Ma'amoyin Shai Rachman. And he says that he thinks the reason why they're called Shai Rachman is because these are the two Shi'aram that Shlomo HaMelech built. The Pregate of Leda says that Shlomo HaMelech built two Shi'aram, the Haravayis, one where Hassanim would go in, and someone who went through that Shai, everyone would know he was a Hassan, and the people sitting there would give him a bracha. The other shah was for Avelim, and people who saw someone coming through that shah would be Menachem them. And uh, those are the two sha'aram of uh, Shari Rachman. So these two sha'aram were on Harabais. If here the Shari Rachman, as we said, it's the time of Shlomo Amelach, and all the time through, up until the end of Bayashini, Harabais was a square of 500 hours. If he holds that this Shai Rachman is part of the Haravayas, it's located on the Haravayas, that means the square would be basically over here. With the Mokam Amikdash being the Dome of the Rock. If he would hold, if the Kaftar Affair holds that the Mokam Amikdash is somewhere on the south, let's say somewhere here, then the, Mok then the 500, the 500 Amma square Haravayas would be around here, and the Shai Rachman is outside of Haravayas. I hope I'm clear. You understand what I'm saying? If the Kaftar of Fel said that the Shaira is part of the Harabayas in the time of Shlomo Melech, that again means that he held the Mokom Amigdash was at the Dome of the Rock. Well, it's a quote from the Kaftar of Fel, but there's a controversy. Oh, okay. I thought that that was said. That's why I didn't Did address oh. it. I didn't say it yet. Oh, no, no, it was said it. by the. Uh, by the no, I'm saying you didn't bring the Kaftar of Fel. I didn't. Okay, now I'm going to bring it. I, I thought you that was. You bring the resolution before the problem. Okay. The Kaftar of Ferch, the controversy starts from this part of the Kaftar of Ferch. The Kaftar of Ferch talks about the question whether in his time people used to go daven by Shai Rachman, they used to stand close to the eastern wall of Harabais. Kaftar of Ferch then discusses the question whether it's the eastern wall of Harabais or perhaps it's the eastern wall of the Azar. He proves from a couple of proofs that it's the eastern wall of the Harabais and not the Azar. One of the things he says, this would be a third on the, on the eastern wall, the southern third. If we take the eastern wall of Harabayas and we split it into three, this third is around over here. So someone said, wanted to show from this quote of the Kafta of Ferah that Shar Shushan is located somewhere around over here. And if Shar Shushan is here, then that would mean, according to most Ukrainian, that the, the Beis Amigdosh was aligned with Shar Shushan and the Beis Amigdosh is somewhere on the south. As he said, there are many other places in Kaftar of Ferah where it, you can clearly derive that he assumed that the Mokum Amigdash was at the Dome of the Rock. So, but over here he seems to say that it's on the south. So, it's not so hard. If anyone looks at the eastern wall of the Harabayas, one will see that the eastern wall of Harabayas is really the eastern wall of Harabayas, but also the eastern wall of the old city. Since the Harabais is all the way at the east of the city, the wall on the eastern side covers at its southern tip the Harabais and then continues past the Harabais and is just the wall of the old city going all the way until the northeastern corner where the Rockefeller Museum is. Meaning the eastern wall is really the eastern wall of the old city, which in part serves as the eastern wall of Harabais. 
Here's another picture of it. As you can see, there's the eastern wall of Ha'avayis, and it continues on to be the eastern wall of the old city, with no differentiation, no demarking of where it ends being Ha'avayis and continues on to being the eastern wall of the old city. Therefore, if someone were to stand on Ha'azizim, or anywhere to the east, and look at the wall, when he's referring to the wall, he says the eastern wall, he's referring to the entire eastern wall. And therefore, when he says a third down the wall, the southern third of the wall, when we take that entire wall and check where the southern third is, it ends up around here. At this arrow, which is across the Makom of the Kippah Tassela. So again, the Kaftar of Ferah holds that the Kippah Tassela is the Dome of the Rapid, the Makom. So you would, the assumption of those who, who want to claim, according to the Kaftar of Ferah, that it was in the southern area, are only looking at that part that was actual the and wall the of the but if you actually look at the whole at the thing, whole wall, then it comes out to the middle. Sure. Yeah. How, how could the base of Migdash have stood on the southern set, that southern part, if that's an extension, wasn't that's, around during the first time? Very, very good question. It's true, it wasn't even around. We see the tefa, we know that it was an extension, right. but the, we can't look at archaeology. So that's why I'm not even going. They say that we're not, we're not going to deal with archaeology. That's why I'm not. Just proving it just from the Macarius itself without going into what you just said. So would you say that the southern wall is in a way similar to the Kotel in that it's a retaining wall? All three walls. And the southern wall is also a retaining, retaining wall. wall. Yes. Sure. Is this uh, taking into account the whole eastern wall? Is that, how does that play out with the Sharaj? So I'm going to get to that in one second, which I'm going to right now. But just <coughs> this eastern wall, one ha'ara. The walls around the old city that we see today were built in the Turkish period, which is after the Kafta Afar, by Sultan Suleiman. But the walls actually were not built by Sultan Suleiman, were not built yesh me'ayin. This is Meir ben Dov, who is the head archaeologist on the walls of the old city and around the Harbay Plow. And he says the notion that Yerushalayim in the Mamluki period, which is the period of the Tafta of Farah, didn't have any wall, is based on the assumption that Sultan Suleiman, who built the walls around the old city, built it Yesh Me'ayim without anything being there earlier. But in fact, from sources that we have, we know that in Yerushalayim in the Mamluki period, what Sultan Suleiman did, there was certain, here's a map, from the time of the Kafta of Ferah, from before Sultan Suleiman. You see the eastern wall is there from the southern point all the way until we're the northern eastern corner of the old city where Rappafel Museum. And here there's also a wall. But there are certain parts of the wall which were knocked down. The main part of the south, and there are other pirtsot where the wall wasn't there, and that's what Sultan Suleiman fixed over and also repaired the wall. But the eastern wall appeared even in the time of the Kafta of Farah, and therefore what he's referring to, the, the third of the eastern wall, he's referring to the entire eastern wall. What you said about Shara. Uh, Raya to this, that he's referring to the entire eastern wall, is from what he says regarding this Shara He says, Ulitzvayna Pesach HaSogur HaShab HaMizrach Shamanu Allah Shu Shara Shushan Shu Shara Shushan, sorry. To the north of this gate that we just said is Shah Shushan, Kimitachavei Keshes, one distance of a Mitachavei Keshes, of an arrow throw away, there are two great Sha'arim, which are Shari Rachim. Again, Shari Rachim is located one Mitachavei Keshes, one arrow throw to the north of Shah Shushan. So, what we should really do is we should take Shari Rachim and look one Mitachavei Keshes, whatever that distance is to itself, and try to locate Shaharachnam over there, Shashushan over there. Is it clear what I said? I got mixed up. How big is the Mitachavei Keshes in the Kafta of Ferah? The Kafta of Ferah had other times used this, this measurement as Mitachavei Keshes. One of the times he uses it is in Chevron. He says that a Mitachavei Keshes to the west of Maris and Achpela is Kever Avner Bener. Kever Avner Bener, everyone knows where it is, right near Maris and Achpela. It's around 70 to 80 meters from Maris and Achpela. So Mitachavei Keshef is around 70, 80 meters. If we take Shai Rachman over here and we measure around 70, 80 meters, we get to a cross Kipata Sela. Whereas if we want to go to the 
southern third of the wall just surrounding Harabayas, which we said ends up over here, it's around 240 meters away. So of course, Mitachave Keshes could vary a little bit. It could be 70, 80, 90, maybe even 100. But it can be sometimes 70 and sometimes 240. So obviously, the Kafta of is not referring to the location over here. He's referring to Shah Shushan being somewhere over here. Today, we don't see any other Shar on the eastern wall besides the Shah Irak. Which, of course, raises the question, where is Shah Shushan? Let's see, why are we talking about where the Kafta of saw Shah Shushan? Where is the, with the third of the wall of Harabaya? It's the third of the whole wall. Let's just go see where Shah Shushan is. So we don't see really any other shot. The reason is, as you can see, there's a huge landfill. <laughs> Even over here at the corner, there's 15 rows below ground. Just like we see by the Basel Tunnel, right? It goes way below ground. So here there's 15 rows below ground. <clears throat> but this is where the Muslim cemetery, which is to the east of our guys, everyone knows that cemetery. So over here you can see... By Shai Rahman. By Shai Rahman. And you see over here how this landfill covers another like 10 rows. And therefore, when we now go in the Muslim cemetery and try to locate Shah Shushan, we can't find it, probably because it's buried under the land. But if we go back to the sources, we find a source from Mujaradin, who was an Arab, a, a Muslim uh, judge who lived in Yerushalayim in the 15th century. And he has a book all about Yerushalayim and about Hebron. And he says, Shah Nusat, in addition to Shah Rahman, the Choma Mizrahit, is the one that is to the south of these two sha'arim, there's a shah called Satum, stuffed up, just like the Kaftar of told us. Rabni Achoyma, Venita, Mul, Madrigot, Al Burak. Across the steps going up to Al Burak. At that time, Al Burak was shown the steps of Al Burak as the eastern steps going up to the Ramah. That's a better picture of it. But the eastern steps going up to the Ramah is exactly across the Dome of the Rock. So the Shah Shushan that the Kaftar of Ferach was referring to is the same Shah that Mujahideen is referring to, which is located opposite the Dome of the Rock. So just to sum up what we said about the Kaftar of Ferach, I spent a lot of time on it. it, was, it was, okay? At the time of the Kaftar of Ferach, what was common knowledge was just like what we said, the Masurah, the, the Dome of the Rock, that is the Mokum of the, of the Mokum Amigdash, the Kaftar of Ferach have any objections, doesn't talk about this, the Bechudish, the Geshita, the other ones. From a few things that Kaftar Afer says, surrounding the Harabais, we can indicate that, in fact, the Kaftar Afer has so just like everyone else, that the Mokum Amigdosh was at the Dome of the Rat. Shashushan is exactly at the southern third of the Koisal Mizrahi, which is the full Koisal Mizrahi of the city, and that's exactly across the Kippah Tessela. This, we can prove that this is what he means from the distance he gives in Tachavei Keshes away from Shah Rachamim. And this is also mentioned by Mujahadi. Now I just want to get to the other proofs. So, so what time do I have? So what time? As long as you want. Okay. Um, we'll get down to another proof which we said is the Say it until you convince someone. <laughs> now just about the Messer and the Kaftar of Rav. Now I want to get more into topography. Topography is sort of a raya. We take the mountain itself, and it's sort of Mamish Eres, Emes Me Eretz Titzmach. That the mountain itself will tell us the Mokom Amir. So there's a second what topography is. Um, Harabayas, sometimes it's overlooked, but actually Harabayas was a mountain. It was a har. As being and such, it's surroundings are lower, and it goes up and up until the summit. It has elevation up until the summit. When we look at a map, we only see two dimensions. And that's why sometimes you see there's a shortcut going from point A to point B, and you get there, and there's a huge hill going up. So, because it's not telling us the elevation of the mountain topography, a topographical map tells us also the elevation. Meaning, if we look at it, we don't only see two dimensions, we really see three dimensions. How does it tell us three dimensions? This point up here is the highest point of the mountain, 2440 feet above the sea level. And every ring is 10 feet lower, meaning this ring, this where this ring is, is 10 feet lower than here. If I go to here, I just went down the mountain another 10 feet. Meaning, when I have lines closer together, 
the hill is much steeper, the elevation is much steeper, because just going from here to here, I just went down 70 feet. Same thing over here, if I go from this point on the mountain to here, I just went down 70 feet. So over there, the mountain is very steep. Whereas, where the lines are further from each other, so over there, it's a lot more subtle. Where is this map from? Okay. This map was made by Charles Wilson and Charles Warren, who were two archaeologists which came to Israel from England on the PEF, the PEF Palestine Exploration Fund. They came to Israel in the 1860s, um, and they really laid the foundation of archaeology of Israel as a whole. They measured from the sea level from Yafo, they uh, come to think that from them. But if all this is covered, how do they know what the elevation is on the island? Okay, I'm going to that just one second. Okay. One of the main purposes they came was to was to explore Yerushalayim, and not only for archaeology purposes to find out. Yerushalayim suffered from a shortage of water. There was always a problem in Yerushalayim, there wasn't enough fresh water, which brought diseases and people were dying. And uh, they came, their purpose was in Yerushalayim to find, could they find more Mukhuris Mayim, could they find more water on, in Yerushalayim for the people? On our bias, there's about 40 cisterns, some of them very large, like this one. This is a cistern, a Bor Mayim, which holds a lot of water. And there are 40 Borot Mayim cisterns within the Arabayas. Not all of them are uh, as big as this, the biggest one. But Wilson writes that if the, if the cisterns and the water system of Arabayas would work properly, there would be more than enough water for the whole Yerushalayim. So they explored Arabayas, they went into all these Borot, and, that, and they mapped them out. Now, one of the things they, were, they mapped out when they were in these uh, cisterns was where exactly is the rock level for so U.S. When you go into the, to the bar, you can see where it's earth and where you hit the rock. And they marked off where they hit rock. They then found also on our bias, there were like channels of water going from one, to the, one bar to the other. And over there again, they saw where it was earth and where the rock levels are. And finally, when they were here, as we saw the picture in the 30s, a lot of our rice was beer, and it wasn't so built up. And therefore, they still were able to find outcroppings of rock, and that's how they made the topographical map. Now, when we want to test Warren, we want to see, is he accurate with, what he, with the map he makes? You know, it was made by a lot of different points, with Borod Mayim and Jamas, but does he know what he's talking about or not? So we give Warren a test, and the test is in the th southern excavations. As you notice, uh, along the southern wall of Harabayas, now there's a lot of excavations, and we found the Shariat Ulda and the Kvoyas and all kinds of stuff. So, so, so. Right? But we move by the Davidson Center, right. further up. Warren dug over there in what he calls shafts, he dug like uh, pits galleries, like tunnels, and he documented everything he saw over there and wrote what he thinks is over there. After the Six-Day War, Professor Benjamin Mazar excavated the whole area professionally, uncovered it, took away everything, and we found that Warren, Achad la Achad, he knew exactly what was going on, everything Warren said. Rittmeyer, who was worked with Mazar, writes that every day they used to go back and check Warren's maps and this, and they were amazed by how accurate he was. So he really knew what he was doing, and he gave us this map of our bias. And in fact, further now, sometimes there isn't, there's no real archaeological excavations on our bias, but sometimes to fix pipes and things like that, we get uncovered and we find exactly what Warren said is exactly right. And so this is a topographical map of our bias. Why is this so important? The reason why this is so important is because the, as we said, Harabais is a mountain, and therefore, the Beis Hamikdash, when we're going to build it onto a mountain, we can't just build it on one flat area. So what we do is, just like they build in Yerushalayim and a lot of other places where it's mountains, they build it at different levels. That means on one level is, Har is the level of the Chay, let's say. Then there are steps going up, and there's another street. It's Ezra Snoshim. Steps going up, there's Ezra Yisrael. And so the levels of the Beis Amigdash, different Azaras were built on into the mountain at different levels. 
Mishnah's Midas tells us how big each Azara was, and then how much we went down, and how big the next Azara was, and how many steps there were to go down. We know every step was a half a amma, and therefore we can figure out the layout of the different Azaras of the Beis HaMikdash. We then take that with that topographical map, and we compare it. And what we find is... From the MSTO until the eastern wall of the Chayl accumulates 295 acts. So, that means that since we know that the Beit HaMikdash was somewhere within the Harabayas, the Chayl, that means we cannot go anywhere past this wall. So we therefore know that the MSTO cannot be within the first 295 acts of the Harabayas. For if the MSTO was it would be here, our Beit HaMikdash would come out past the walls of the Harabayas. This whole area cannot be the place of the MSD. The second area we know the MSD can't be is the western slope of Harabai. Chazal tells us when someone came to the Beit Hamikdash from the east, he went up a couple of steps to the level of the Nasnoshem and then went up steps to the Israel, and he keeps on going up until he gets to the level of the Hippo. Nowhere does he go down steps. Meaning, if the level of the Hippo, the MSD, would be on the western slope of Harabai, and we would expect that he comes from the east, he goes up, up, and then passes over the summit and goes down a couple of steps until he gets to the level of the Hebo. Since he always goes up and never goes down, we know that the MNRC or the level of the Hebo, well, just showing how he goes up, okay, the level, the Saviyat of the Rambam going here. We therefore know that the MNRC cannot be in the western slope of our Because no, in that part, he, he is going down. Because if you if will be in the western slope, you would have to go past the peak of the mountain and then go down. Since we find in the mission that it's constantly going up and never going down, we know that it can't be on the west. So could, could they have raised uh, the platform in construction? So we assume that the MNR seal was the outcropping of rock, like Chazal tells us that we men of Ushta Sa'ilam, Chazal keep on saying that the creation was from there and bedrock, the, the bedrock itself. A, a third thing, there's a a Naha called the Bezeta Valley that is actually now on the northern side. Now it's included in the Harabayas. These are the walls of the Harabayas today. But before her extended the Harabayas to the north, there was a valley going over here with a moat. And the moat was actually found by war. It's mentioned by Yosef Makasio. This moat, Pompey, the Roman general, was on this mountain to the north, fighting with the Israel, with the Eden who were in Harabayas to the south. Northern tip of Harabayas. We therefore know that the original Harabayas, before Herod's extension, did not go past this valley. Right? So anyway, past this valley, it's not Harmoria anymore. This is the end of Har Harmoria. By that itself, we can prove that the Evan Ashastia was not anywhere up in Milky. The most northern point the Evan could be is around. So just from this process of elimination alone, we know that MRST must have been located within this triangle. We now try to pinpoint the location of the Beit HaMikdash even further. Again, we said that Chazal tell us how big each one of the Azaras were and how much was elevated more than the one before. In other words, there were 15 steps from the Israel to the Nashim, and so on. So taking the information from Chazal, we basically get a cut like this try to place it on the mountain, it fits perfectly in one spot. That is the place of the Dome of the Rock, where the height of the Dome of the Rock down to the Azara, and again from the Azara down to the Tesnoshim, everything fits perfectly just as Chazal tells us. Here is on the topographical map. So you see why it fits. So it's not too steep, but it's a chimney. It's also it's not flat. It's a hill down, but a gradual. If we try to place the Makum Amigdash anywhere in the south, we will find that it is way too steep for, the, for it to fit with what we know from the Mishnayas. Again, if we place it on the north, it totally does not fit with what we know from Hazal. And therefore, um, just taking what, not just, but taking what we know from Hazal about the different levels of the Azores of the Beit Amigdash, and comparing it to the mountain we know now, we again come to the same conclusion that the Messiah also told us that the Beit HaMikdash is at the Dome of the Rock. The location of the Mokom HaMikdash was at the Dome of the Rock.
third thing is, we said, the Piyat Ahar, Adalt, the Abba Kuris, the Sukkim, the Sukkim tell us that the Beit HaMikdash was Al Rosh Ahar, at the summit of Har Muriyo. The Yerushalmi talks about the Beit HaMikdash being at the summit of the mountain, the Yerushalmi even discusses how could they build the Beit HaMikdash at the peak of the mountain, we know that the peaks of the mountain were used by the Canaan of Abba Zara, and the Yerushalmi deals with the question. Either way, we see the Yerushalmi knew that the Beis was at the peak of Haram Uriya. And again, Yerushalmi from Matasio also said that the Beis was at the peak, at the summit of Mount Raya. Of course, the Mokum, the peak of Haram Uriya is exactly with the Dome of the Rock is, at the Tzachra, with the Masurya, and the topography told us, the, 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 told us that the Mokum HaMikdash was there. The fourth thing, the, the Chazal tell us that the eastern wall of the Azara, Ezzas Yisrael, the fighting between Ezzas Yisrael and Ezzas Noshim, was built to the due east. In other words, it was to the exact, uh, what was it called, Carmel direction. Meaning, it was the exact line of north-south line. These blue lines is the Ruchot Olam. As you can see, the walls of Harabayas are not built to the exact east, or to the exact south, or to the real west. The only wall on Harabayas that is built to the true east is the eastern wall of the raised platform. Who made up those lines? Which ones? These the are blue imaginary lines. lines. I'm the blue lines. They're imaginary lines. They're not real lines. These are the Lancaster lines. Uh, These are imaginary lines. I'm no, just showing you that the line, the wall, so of how, how do you determine the line? Do you do we, it's, it's, do we, it's astronomical. Oh, okay. The only line that is exactly um, the line, sorry, the only wall that is aligned to do east is the eastern oh. wall of the raised platform. Again, when we start with the Beit Mokum Amigdosh being here, and we measure out where the wall between the Azara and the Snasha would be, it ends up exactly over here. This wall is built on an older wall, probably the wall divided the Ezzas Yisrael and the Ezzas meaning it's the eastern wall of the Ezzas Yisrael, which is built just like Chazal tell us to do east. <coughs> the eastern wall of the platform. That's the wall of the Ezzas Yisrael. So, okay, so we spoke about the Mokum Amigdash, we took four different routes, four avenues. Together, we spoke about the Masurahs, about a place that was known, passed over from generation to generation, where the Mokum Amikdash was. We compared what we know from Chazal to the topography of the mountain and saw that it fits only at the Dome of the Rock and no other place on the mountain. The, curious, the, the sources that tell us that it was the summit of Harun Maria, again, pointing to the Dome of the Rock. And in Tzayim Bashetah, there are many landmarks. I just mentioned this one more, but there are many different things on our Maria, on our base today, that we, uh, we see connection between them and things that were there in the time of the Beis Amigdash, that all point that the Mokum Amigdash was at the Dome of the Rock. This is a famous picture in the end of Mishnah Yismidus of the Azores and Harabayas. If we were to put it on the Harabayas today, it would look something like this. I know this is extremely unclear. This is the map that's used by Kapota Anu, which guides at Harabaya. And this is a map that you by can see. Because there's an organization called Kapota Manu. Uh, they have guides at Harabaya. It's an all open time. Whenever Harabaya is open, you can come and there's someone there to guide. Or a pen is for guide for Kapota Manu. And this is the Dome of the Rock. As you can see here, the Lapsa. Not so clear this, but. Here is the Mokum Amikdash, where the blue is, is the Azara. This yellow line is the Azas Noshim, and surrounding is the Chayel. This red is the original 500 Amma square, which I didn't get into why exactly it's placed there, but we know that it was placed around there. So this is the 500 Amma square, and here is the Azara, where you now let it go with the Raisa, with the Rabbanon, we stay out of this entire area. When we go to Arabayas, we go up from the Shah Mugrabim, Gate over here on the south. We walk along the south till the east. The south, as you can see, there's a lot of room, but on the east, there's the least room, and therefore we go right along the wall. There's Sharachim, and then over here we go on the north, come 
close to the ramah, which is just come close to 500 ramah, and the layout. Why are there some people that only walk on the well, western side? Because there are pictures of what we said in the top of the trial, and maybe he played to the one on the street in the south, which as I showed, it's the day it's the south. Okay. Not too close to our picture. One thing is uh, to know today, people know what goes on to the entire platform at all. Raised platform. As you can see, the MS is placed on the room on the raised platform that is mutter to go. The reason why people don't go is because already years ago they decided that since there's no markation on the platform, someone who would go there would have to know exactly where to go. If not, he could just walk by mistake right into the Mokam al And not everyone who goes to Abayat knows exactly where to go. So if you stay off the platform and you know that at the east you go along the wall, then you're safe. Would you go on there? If, would I if I would be able to on the north? Yes. Because there's also a concern from not going there, but I think we'll talk about that. Would, would, it, would you go or a woman go to the western part, outside of the red, without going to Mikvah? No, I would not. Because you know, you're pretty certain that that's not hard. When they added on, when Herod expanded the Arabia, we don't, they, they probably couldn't be Mikadish any, anymore. They couldn't uh, really make any Kedusha there. But, Assume that people saw it as the Harabai is getting larger. In other words, they didn't see, okay, so there's the original square and then there's the addition. They treated the entire Harabai with the Ketusha of Harabai. And since that's how it was in the time of the Rishon English, I think we should also, and people will know that some people go there with Al Tzvilan, they don't know where to go. Not so weren't there places in the original Harabai before, before Herod that you could go to without going to Mikvah? No. Every inch of. On our bias, when I have to go to the mikvah, we do a raisa. It's a chiv to go to the mikvah before one goes on to. So, so that a, a teenage girl, for example, unless she goes to the mikvah, could not go at all. Right. So that was, that was true in days of basic mikvahs that a young single woman would not go. Oh, again, huh? So a, a young single woman who's never been married who never goes to the mikvah so would never be allowed to go to a basic mikvah. In those days, they didn't have that. In those so days, they for sure went to the mikvah. They ate truma, they ate taros. Okay. Girls went to the mikvah. That started later. But even uh, next, I'm going to finish and I'll get back to that. Okay. This is again, Upa. This is the path that people take. As you can see, at the north, we come close just to the far of the ground, and then we'll come Okay. Just one word. We've been davening for thousands. Hundreds of years, over almost 2,000 years, Gavin Dashem, Shetalemu, the Simcha, Azenu, Skainu, with Leno, and Toshvoch, which will bring us back to Israel and bring us back to the Beit Amigdash. And for years, people came in little drops. Finally, a Toshvoch was at Shetechla, a Toshvoch was Hopex Banu, and brought us back with the Kibbutz Goliath, with Nisim Venefloyd, which no one ever had imagined. We came back to Israel. And 50 years ago, we were there to see the Nisim of the Six Day War that we got the entire old city of Yerushalayim and Harabayas without even wanting it. The Kodesh Bokhul just put it into our hands. And like we always said, Shetalim Nisim Kola Atenus Keinu Mut Moleinu Veshom Nasser Lefanecha Kovane Sarisenu We will come back to Nalim and Yerov and Eshtachar Lefanecha We also have a part of this deal. So when the Kodesh brings us to Israel, we then will go up and be and try to be Makkah's Kobanis, and therefore we can try to do whatever we can to try to get to the Beis Amigdash, and uh, with Hashem's help, we will be there at the Zod Beis Amigdash.